Well, I mean, it was an incredible uh, branding technique because whatever money you spent on that, there's no way you would have been able to go out and buy that in advertising because you had barstool sports, you had yeah. news companies coming out there. So after that happened, what was the result in the office? Oh, man, everyone was so excited. I remember that whole weekend because all we did is really just took it, put it on Twitter. Um, you know, we sat there kind of cranking up the tweets and, and figuring out the best way to type out the tweet. And that's really, I think, the hardest part of all this, you know, viral marketing stuff that people just assume that it's like, oh, well, the idea is great and that's it. But it's so important on how you type messages out on the Internet and on specific platforms that have their own like specific little caveats, you know, like on Twitter, if you're engaging with a certain demographic, you want to purposefully misspell the, the word you and just put a letter you. So there's like small stuff like that. So it took a little bit of tinkering to, to flush out the tweet and create something that we knew was going to be easy for people to hit the retweet button on. Um, so yeah, man, it blew up and it was funny. It felt like 15 minutes of fame. It was crazy. Like we tweeted it out on Thursday, the plane flew on Friday and then it went viral on Saturday and it went viral on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, but it was funny. My two pieces of content were going viral at the same time. My, a, a screenshot of my tweet saying that I was going to do it tomorrow with no date. And then there was another screen, a picture of the banner actually going viral. So it was funny, like on Saturday and Sunday, because some people only saw my screenshot saying today at three o'clock or whatever, there was groups of people lined up like live streaming the air in San Francisco thinking that the plane's going to happen today. So they thought it was going to happen today on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So um, that part was pretty funny, but yeah, dude, afterwards, man, we got through the whole stunt, you know, we were getting thousands of visitors to our website, a bunch of job applications, old clients hitting us up being like, Oh, no way. I saw that. Like that was you guys. Um, ended up being a great case study for us. Dude, yesterday, somehow BBC news was at our office filming like a little mini documentary. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, what the hell, dude, I flew a banner that said suck my nuts, Robin hood. And all this is coming out of it. So it was totally unexpected. Um, we had a team come in here last week and, and film for like six hours. They're doing a whole documentary on it. Um, yeah, dude. Wall Street well, Journal interviewed me. You know, you're you're uh, talking about uh, hitting virality for yourself, but your whole business is actually about helping people figure out how can I play in the social media space so that I don't look like the you know 50 year old boomer that that has no idea what they're doing and like i realized this is me my uh we have a, a nanny she came over the other day and she was like hey i was looking at your twitter feed and like all of your comments back and forth and it's weird i didn't know people spelled correctly on twitter and i was like <laughs> Wait, what do you wait? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, I mean, none of my friends spell anything right on Twitter." And you're talking about like a a, a woman at an advanced university, and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> fuck, I'm old." <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it's weird, man. There's like weird little things like that on all on all platforms where it takes, you know, you got to kind of hang around and kind of pick up the vibe and pick up like the little slang and stuff, you know. So I think millennials and gen z they can smell a boomer on social media from a mile away man you know it's just it's it's too easy You're using too many hashtags and and kind of forcing it down people's you know throats so you really have to know how to play it all correctly for it to work out so yeah that's you know that's what we do for brands and companies all the time so it was kind of fascinating and really by accident that it happened for us but you know now that i look back i'm like wow this was like the perfect case study for us and and kind of totally wraps up what we do in a, in a beautiful little package and now i'm probably going to be known as a suck my nuts guy which... <laughs> the price you pay for fame <laughs> the so price as, a, as a person that's um you know done gone viral i think one of the challenges with it is it's not unlike a drug right where all of a sudden you have this huge explosion on your social media like every time you look down on it you're getting that love and that affirmation that you've done something the right dopamine mm -hmm. yeah do you feel like uh the next hit when it's not that big is are you gonna be like uh jonesing for a for a bigger hit probably man i really didn't expect it to affect me as much as i as it you know it did because 
it's weird working in social media for as many years as I have, I've kind of started to hate social media in a weird way. Like I deleted my Instagram. I don't use Instagram whatsoever. I don't post anything personal anymore, anywhere. I don't use Snapchat, nothing. I've seen how social media affects my younger sister and I hated it and how it affects society and younger people and how it just, I feel like it really fucks with your mental, especially if you're not you know, strong mentally. So, I mean, I'll admit, dude, when I was going viral, I was fucking refreshing my phone every two minutes. I'm waiting for that bar stool retweet. I'm, I'm waiting for someone to comment something and you're reading everything. And dude, I was obsessed all weekend. I was obsessed. My girlfriend would, I would go to breakfast with her and I'm just, she was pissed off for all weekend. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think this definitely set the bar for us in terms of like, you know, a viral stunt that we put our name on it. And we've had a couple people ask us during interviews, like, are you guys going to do something again? And it's kind of like this odd, you know, you kind of feel like you have to do something again, but once you have to follow up, you know that people are going to be judging you based on your last thing. So it definitely, I think, gets to your head. And, um, but I don't know, at the same time, I kind of look at business almost like a sport. And I think that, athletes have to go through similar things and and i think that mamba killer mentality you know no matter if you're in a sport or business it's kind of you have to have a little bit of that to kind of persevere and push through so i don't know man i think if if the next idea comes up i'm just gonna fucking execute it if it doesn't work you know shooters keep shooting it is what it is but i'd be lying to you if i said that the next time i'm not gonna be like man did it do better than than the suck my nuts thing the suck my nuts thing was just so perfect that I don't know. It's going to be tough. <laughs> so uh, why Instagram? Uh, did you, why did you leave that one of all things? Like you're still on Twitter. Yeah. Instagram, because Instagram to me is the fakest platform to me. Instagram is just highlights only. You're only showing the highlights of your life. Everything's filtered on there. You don't know what's real, what's fake. You know, there's not really like conversation happening on, on Instagram. Um, and I feel like Instagram just, I don't know, man. I looked at, I've had a lot of success since I was, you know, probably like 18 or 19 years old. And I'll see some of these people that are, you know, my age and they make a little bit of money and everyone immediately is flexing. They're showing their Rolexes. And I, I did that for like probably like six months and I started, I don't know, man, it just wasn't fulfilling to me. I just didn't, it didn't feel like me personally and I didn't feel right doing it. It just felt weird. And yeah, man, I don't know. I just didn't want to, I didn't really want to participate in that. So Twitter, I like because Twitter is more about conversations and you can, you can engage with interesting people. I can follow you and I can learn about this. I can learn about that. I can, you know, I can have a conversation on one specific topic and I can read all about that topic. So yeah, I think, I think Twitter is just kind of more my style and more about learning. And I feel like I can get more value out of, out of Twitter. And I feel like Instagram is more for, for my ego and to, to feed, you know, this, I don't know, this monster. I don't want to yeah, be a part I mean, of it. Instagram for me is like a visual drug, right? Because like when you go to that like explore thing, it's just going to show you what you slowed down on, you know? So as you're scrolling, even you don't even have to push a button. Just the fact mm -hmm. that like something stopped the doom scrolling, they're going to show that to you and they're going to keep trying. And you find out like all of a sudden you're heading down these like weird paths where you're like, uh, I don't think one, I should be looking at this. And two, yeah, yeah. I really wouldn't want anybody to like, to know that I'm what was in this thing <laughs> because like, you know, this is just like, it's, it like is, it's like the path to hell. It's like the, mm -hmm. Hey, that felt good. I want to look at that again. I want to look at that again. And it's definitely doing something weird to your brain. So like, I never really participated in Instagram. Like maybe every once in a while I'd throw up a picture, but I'm a hundred percent with you. Like I have virtually no interest at all in Instagram. No, I think I can, oddly enough, I can kind of, tell a little bit by just how you are it just seems like a very big vanity play like instagram's just about vanity and ego you know i think and uh yeah thanks for checking out this podcast short if you like this interview make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast and if you're really interested in conversations like this you may want to consider joining the articulate ventures network to find out more go to network.articulate.ventures <laughs>